everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Scripture says in the book of 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, I want to read beginning in your hearing, verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on, a, on the wood but put no fire under it and i will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood but put no fire on it verse 24 then you call on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god who answers by fire he is god so all the people answered and said it is well spoken Hallelujah. I've taken for a subject matter, fire, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you have done. Thank you for your word, for it is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Hallelujah, God, it gives us direction, Father, and it shows us your heart about situations about things that we deal with in life so father as we look into your word as we look into the life of elijah and jezebel and ahab god i pray that you would speak to your children through me lord let them be edified and i pray god that you would be glorified i pray father and i ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, I pray, would be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There was a crisis in the northern kingdom of Israel over in Judah. There was a wicked king and a queen who ruled over God's people. First Kings, the 16th chapter and the 34th verse, if you would read that in your own hearing, it lets us know that Ahab was so wicked that he sacrificed his son in a ritual. And the Bible lets us know that, a that Ahab allowed his Canaanite wife Jezebel to bring her Canaanite gods, you know, who was Baal and Asherah, over into God's people's kingdom, over into Israel. And she called the people to start to worship Baal and Asherah. See, they were considered, um, the people were claiming them to be, you know, the power over nature, the power over weather, the power over rain. But I love how when uh, Elijah stepped on the scene uh, and he represented not Baal, he didn't represent some dead God, but he represented a true uh, and the living God, uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Hallelujah. The God that has all power. Power belongs to God. Uh, hallelujah. And so when Elijah stepped on the scene, the first thing that Elijah did uh, was he shut up the heavens. Hallelujah that there be no rain so that put their gods to shame because see their gods are supposed to have the power over rain and see what that did was not only did it show them that they had a false god but also it shut down their economy because if there be no rain there be no crop there be no food and so God had to reintroduce the people to the true and the living God you know him and Ahab and Jesse you know, thinking that they were in power when all along God was just waiting, waiting for the moment to send his prophet uh, Elijah on the scene. But see, God wasn't finished yet. 
Not only did he need to let them know who the true and the living God is, but he also needed to deal with the false prophets. You know, those prophets of Baal that have been sacrificing um, children and performing all these rituals over God's people. Hallelujah! So God had to deal with them. And so what did Elijah do? And I encourage you to read in your own hearing, um, your own meditation time, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. But I'm just going to paraphrase what, um, eight, what Elijah did. Elijah, as he said in uh, verse 21, going back to the text, 1 Kings 18, 21, Elijah told the people, how long will you falter between two opinions? You know, either you're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Baal. And the people did not answer. You know, they still needed to be convinced. You know, probably because they had seen so much evil in the land. They had seen all these prophets of Baal, you know, contaminating their minds and got them all confused. And it's the devil. The devil is the one that wants to put blinders on people's eyes and hearts so that they cannot see the truth. And I believe that's what's going on in the land today. So many people's eyes are closed and blinded to the truth that they cannot see the evil that has prevailed in the land today. But God had an answer for the evil prophets of that day. He called his man, uh, Elijah, onto the scene. And Elijah said, okay, I got something for you, Baal's prophets. Uh, meet me on uh, Mount Carmel and I'm going to give you a, a sacrifice. And the God that answers by fire, he is Lord. And I want you to read that story because what happened was Baal's prophets began to call on, you know, their God. And long story short, he never answered. And it even gestures in the Bible, um, Elijah gestures with them and, and says, well, maybe your God is asleep. You know, God, he begins to play with them. Hallelujah. But the God that answered by fire was the Lord. Hallelujah. And I want you to know today uh, that God is saying the same thing today. Uh, Whose side are you on? If you are going to be on the Lord's side, serve God. I've heard many prophets in the land. God has sent warning to people. You know, sounding the alarm. Letting you know that God is calling you back. Calling you to choose Whose side are you on? Technically, if you have given your life to the Lord, if you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you answered the call and says, yes, you belong to God. You don't belong to all these strange gods that are in the land now, but you belong to the true and the living God. You know, sealed by the blood, Jesus, when he hung on the cross and died and paid the price for our redemption, you now belong to God. And God, again, is saying, choose today who you going to serve. Because when the fire falls, you want to be on the side of of God. Know today that God loves you. Hallelujah. Know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, know the God that you serve, the true and the living God. Denounce Satan and return back to God. Hallelujah. And until we meet again, I'll be praying for you. God bless you. Videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born 
word sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.